when the 13 Fs come out, you know, you should have access to this as different services that have access to it. It makes it a lot easier for the services we have uh, where they lay everything out for you. But, you know, 13 Fs are, are the reports that come, I think it's over $100 million in assets that they have to report all their holdings, right? All the equity holdings. And this is their buys, their sells, their holds, and they do it every quarter. And they all come out around the same time, the two, two day stretch, three day stretch or so. But, you get to see a lot of stuff there, not from the Renaissance Technologies, the, the Six Sigmas, and, and yeah, I'm not talking about you know the high frequency trading firms that front run and just they don't care about you know fundamentals or anything. I'm talking about like Appaloosa, Valpost, uh, Berkshire. You want to look at and going through these, Daniel. I know you went through them as well. I mean, one of the biggest takeaways here, and again, guys, just to let you know, these are positions that. These investment firms and hedge funds have taken last quarter. They could be out of these positions right now, actually, a month later. So they could be. But the managers that I look at usually hold things, and when they get into something, they add it over time. They're not looking to flip it right away most of the time. So one of the things I noticed is the massive move out of the biggest technology names. I mean, Amazon, Twitter, Appaloosa sold. Uh, Balposa has uh, eBay, you know, Viacom, Fox. You have... A lot of Tesla sales. Elliott Management selling Tesla. Uh, FMR, top sales. Apple, Amazon, Tesla. CRM, Adobe. Uh, you know, Greenlight was another surprise where, where you know, here's a guy that was preaching about gold and inflation, yet his top sales, one of them were, were, were GDX. And, I mean, you sold it like a month ago. Now would be the best time. I was just surprised to see that. But I'm also seeing a lot of funds get into more mid caps and small caps. I mean, even Greenlight, API Group, that's an engineering safety inspection for industrial companies, $3 billion market cap, one of his top buys. Uh, Icon with uh, Bosch Health, which is a little bit bigger, but First Energy, Dana, Xerox, uh, you know, just stocks that you you know you don't really hear often in these things, or I see often. And then you have Maverick uh, you know, selling technology as well. Uh, Melvin as well. So Facebook, Melvin sold Maverick sold Facebook, Alibaba, but just a lot of Amazon sales, a lot of face couple of couple of companies added Facebook and one of the biggest buys I saw have been Uber last quarter. But let, yeah. I wanted to get your take because it just it's a lot there, guys, but really you can learn a lot from this and these trends. And after, you know, I'll show you how to make money off this too. But Dan, yeah, I want to get your third thoughts. Yeah, definitely go through them. Uh just to educate yourself. Like Frank said, I mean, there's certain ones that are just more trading. So these things have to the reason you see them a lot of the big names disclose them in a, just a day or so is because they have 45 days from the end of the quarter to disclose these. So these are all dated March 31st. A lot, a lot can happen. So you want to, depending on what you're looking at, Whale Wisdom and different things breaks it down. That's a free site, Whale Wisdom. And you can look at change in shares. So new positions, increased positions, closed positions, decreased positions. The technology thing was interesting. There was a handful of those big guys getting exposure to oil. Um, Facebook and Microsoft stood out to me because people either initiated from the handful that I follow more initiated or increased those positions than sold or decreased, uh, in Facebook and Microsoft. So it'll be kind of interesting to see the split of the fangs and the high technology stocks. I just don't see how they don't, uh, continue on higher with their margins and the tailwinds they have from a macro perspective. The, uh, let me see. Oh, Berkshire. Yep. Went from over 52 million shares in Wells Fargo to less than a million. They sold why, Merck why and the, CVX. Why the hell don't you sell it all? I don't know. I'm sure there's tax. And the other thing to consider, uh, like Greenlight, you said, I was I was shocked to see him so, sell the gold as well. But you never know what these guys need in form of liquidation, redemptions, and all that. So it, it, just take all this with a grain of salt. But it is good to see what some of the smartest and brightest and best performers are looking at and adding to. Another one is Icon. He keeps buying Xerox. That's very intriguing to me as if you pull up a chart from that, it is just still well down from the coronavirus crash in uh, last year. Yeah, you know, and I'm looking at this right now where just to show you guys why this is important, how I look at this, right? It's not that I see, let's take Appaloosa, right? David Teppa. And I'm just checking out one of the stocks he buys, $8 billion market cap. This is uh, Paysafe. So top buys. So his top buys are Chesapeake, Viacom, uh, DR Horton, and, you know, he has his top sells there. But when I look at the top buys, and the other one's just a pay safe was the one I just mentioned. So that symbol is uh, PSFE. So how do I make money on this? So what I would do is track these stocks. So I know that Tepper, who I'm very familiar with, and I'm a big fan of, he, he 
usually adds to his positions over time. He doesn't take like a max position right off the bat. So when he gets it, he's usually in these things for a while. Most of the time, unless anyone's thesis changes, he's going to change but most of the time. So if he's buying Chesapeake here and I see it, now I'm like, hey, you know, it's in my head. He bought Chesapeake and Chesapeake wherever it is at 50. If I see it come down, to me, that's a big buying opportunity. And if it comes down, if I see Insart is buying, now I know that, hey, David Tepper is going to be there to buy as well because he just bought this thing and he's probably going to be adding to his position. And it gives you an opportunity to get in sometimes 10, 15, 20% below where these funds, where their cost basis is. And that's how I always look at this. And so maybe nothing happens. Maybe Chesapeake goes rockets higher from here. I don't own it. Maybe DH, DR Horton rockets from here. I don't own it. Uh, but if they do come down, that's when I start really researching these things and say, hey, didn't, didn't David Tepper just buy this thing and it's down? Why is it down? Well, it had a, t a bad quarter, which any company could have, but everything seems intact and it seems like a you know a sell-off where it, it looks like that Tepper's going to come in and buy. Maybe you see insiders buying. You're getting at a good price, but that's how I look at this. That's why it's so important to look at, at you know, where the trends are happening, what they're buying, but I'm seeing a lot of small and mid-cap buys. Usually these are all large caps. These are billion-dollar funds. A lot of mid-caps are being bought here, and where's that rotation coming from? It's coming out of large tech stocks. I mean, the biggest names that they made the easiest gains on, the Apples, Microsofts, Amazons, I mean, the AQRs and the big firm that, that top sells, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, MasterCard. You know, just going down down a list here. I don't know if you saw anything else there, Daniel, that, that, that stood out. But those are the things that stood out the most to me. Uh, you know, top sell GDX. I don't know why Greenlight would, would, you know, he just touted inflation. He got it. And, you know, he seemed like he was early to that trade. But now it seems like he, he got out of it a little bit too early. But I don't know. Who knows where the market's going to go. And a lot of Tesla sales here, guys. A lot. I've seen a lot. Pershing Square. One of their top buys was Domino's. But that was interesting. Soros. Yep. Top buys, Amazon, Viacom, Google. So one of the few that's adding. Now, you know, you could hate Soros for personal reasons and whatever side of politics you're on or whatever. I mean, those guys that work for him are brilliant and they have amazing, amazing returns. And Soros is brilliant when it comes to investing. Don't send me any emails or anything. I know people have personal feelings about the guy and stuff like that. I get it. I talk about from an investor perspective, which my job is to make you money. He's one of the guys that you want to follow. He, he's, you know, we're not just doing this for 25 years. He's very, very early trends. The fact that he's buying some of these technology stocks is definitely interesting. And one more thing here, Daniel, is one of the biggest buys that I'm seeing is Uber. Uber is a buy in a lot of these places. So I don't know if you saw anything else there that you wanted to mention, but you know, all these names come out and it's really great. And, and for me, it just, it really helps me find new ideas. It does. It helps me find new ideas. Yeah. That's the big takeaway. I mean, uh, like you said, make some lists, track them. Um, when you do see a hedge fund or somebody take a huge position, you know, make a note of that. Uh, to your point with Paysafe, uh, third point run by Dan Loeb, they bought 41 and a half million shares. So Tepper has 10 million, started a new position. Third point, bought 41 and a half million. That's a big deal. Doesn't guarantee anything, but it makes you start looking at it and all that. Um, no, nothing else really stood out to me. I like to see, again, my big takeaway is the new positions are exciting. I want to see what increased positions and closed positions are. I think that's the, the, the real meat here. And again, a lot of salt here taken with this because what's in the news right now about Tesla is that the big short, uh, Burry. Burry. Suppose you can see headlines about how he's got 40% or more of his fund betting on Tesla puts because you have to, disc but you don't get all the information. So don't believe everything you read. Uh, it's very, very hard to believe that he would do a time dated bet on half, roughly half your fund. So you can buy, you don't, if you're buying puts or calls, they don't have to, from the easy filings, you don't tell what strike and price they paid. So be cautious when you see a market value number representing shares versus actual options. Uh, again, just don't, don't believe everything you read. Come on. I know, but- Did you also, see any of that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he's got a big short position now and, and puts- Right. Positions. He bought a lot of puts, but yes. you don't know the strike. You don't. There's a lot of details you don't know. Yeah. So people just take that and, and say, oh, well, this has got to be worth X amount of millions and millions and millions. It's just- But there don't are get caught funds, up on that. Melvin Capital, that hey, look, they're encouraged, even Burry, they're encouraged to take massive leverage positions because if they're wrong, what happens? Basically nothing. Depends. Some of these guys have money in their fund, but they're already extremely rich. But it's other people's money, right? People are betting with him because he's a great investor and you're using other people's money to leverage the hell out of it. So if you lose, what happens? Okay, I lose it. Sorry. What happened to Melvin Capital? Nothing. 
Nothing. What happened to them? I think they, they got, you know, more money, right? They raised more money. for, And that's what happens. These guys will start another fund and raise a whole bunch of money. But if they're right, now you get the massive, massive payday. So if you see Tesla crash, that's where you get the massive payday. And, and you know, again, it's not, he's one of the best short sellers and I get it, but I don't care who you are in this industry. Wall Street is ruthless. It's about money 100% of the time. And when you're down, they will take everything from you. You could be laying naked in the street with your socks on and they'll pull your socks off and say, nope, we're taking that too. That's how Wall Street is. That's how you have to look at Wall Street. And believe me, if you, you know, because one of the things that you said, Daniel, was, hey, I don't know if he'd bet half his, yes, he would. A lot of these people will on, on a time value or whatever. And again, there's probably hedges around that. There definitely hedges around that. Yeah, I'm just saying, you don't, that's a far fetch. And yeah. I, he, you can do whatever you want, but I'm just saying, like, I doubt that it's anywhere near what they're reporting if you actually had all the details. Yeah. No, no, no. That's no. all I'm saying. So just, that's what I meant. Use it as an educational thing, think through it, you know, do some of your own due diligence, but um, it just, it's just financial media clickbait is all it is. Yeah. And like we mentioned with Tesla, I mean, Elon just, you know, the reason why that stock is high, he's got a cult following. It's not based on fundamentals. And what would, what I'd be pissed off about is just shut up, like get off Twitter and shut up because you're losing like those diehards right now by talking about stupid things to get attention. And in the meantime, you have a significant advantage right now, a massive advantage of your Tesla because there's no cars on the market. There's none. Go to your deal. There's nothing. There's a couple on a lot. It's a lots of half empty. You can't build your own car anyway without getting it in less than six months. It's probably going to be even longer. That chip shortage is going to last well into next year, guys. Trust me, well into next year. Talk to the best sources out there. It's not like a quick solution. Oh, it's going to be fixed. No. So the electric vehicle market, these guys can't get these things on their lot, which gives, you know, Tesla, when I went to buy a car in there, just, I'm not going to buy a Tesla, but it was three weeks to four weeks. I mean, that's a big difference from, you know, for, for months, uh, you know, four, six, eight months, whatever it's going to be. And, you know, you have that EV market right now almost to yourself and you could sell a, a shitload of cars. There's massive demand for it, for cars. But the reason why you use car market is on fire is even me. Like I told that story like a week ago, two weeks ago, where, we, you know, my lease is up. There's no new cars to buy. I'm going to have to buy a used car. That's why they're, they're on fire with Tesla. If you have this guy just shut up about everything, I, I think you're going to see those numbers just go much, much, much higher. Sales go much, much higher uh, because the band is there and then the perfect market, that they're, they're, they're the king of that market. Competition was supposed to enter this year. It's not. It's going to be pushed back another full 12 months at least. So, you know, again, if we get a guy that can shut up, it'll probably be really good, but who knows? Because Tesla's now starting to come down a lot too. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't bet on that. Yeah, that, I wouldn't bet on him being quiet. No, 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 I wouldn't either.